Welcome to the underground. Turn me up, bitch! My Little Underground with Peter A. It's My Little Underground. I'm Peter A. Make sure you're subscribed anywhere you get podcasts. And be sure to follow me on socials at MLUPod. And you can support My Little Underground for as little as $1 a month. Link is in the description and over at PeterAradio.com. Today on the show, I'm joined by Smiley Ariaga. Hello, Smiley Ace. We're going to talk about the 10th anniversary of the Black Keys commercial popping off celebration that is Brothers. They're also reissuing the album. And this was originally originally going to be just about uh, the Black Keys, but New Year's Eve, we got some very unfortunate news that uh, Mr. MF Doom has passed. And, man, fucked me up, Smiley. Every like every every like every influ- every like, hip hop influence I have like uh, they were inspired by MF Doom. Either that or they came up with him. Like Mad Lib is like you know he's, like the, well, everything I do doesn't exist without him and MF Doom. Like you know, and I was listening to mm, Food all night. This is like I, I couldn't even be ha- I, c- I couldn't even be happy about happy like I couldn't even say Happy New Year. <laughs> it's like you know it's just it's, it's impossible. Weird. And I, I was thinking about uh, Danger Doom and. Uh, I recently did a show on uh, 2005, and, and Danger Doom just turned 15 years, and I was re-listening to it, and it sounds uh, incredible, it's very creative, and the fact that, you know, Adult Swim and MF Doom kind of formulated that relationship, uh, I think it's just, it, to me, it, it, MF Doom in general is like, that is the progression of, of, of hip-hop to me. Because he was doing something that was very esoteric, it was very outside the norms of what... It, no one did that. Yeah, and, and that, that's the, that, that was kind of the theme running through Danger Doom. You know, um, there's a lot of... It's, it's about, like, a lot of it is reference cartoons and nostalgia, but it's about what rappers do and what a rapper should do. Like, the stereotypes, what are, you know, what makes a rapper. And MF Doom just contradicts all of that. You know, he's a guy with a mask on. Um... And he's basically a comic book book villain on wax. But then when you listen to him, it's like you don't sound that much like a villain. You're you're a baby face. Yeah, in, he doesn't that throw regard. women down the stairs. Isn't like you know nope. all the uh, horrible, the horrible things that cool rappers do. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, it's great. And he was great. And whew, man, like all of Adult Swim. Like ever since like like ever since I started watching like Adult Swim and stuff. That's like the first. Of MF Doom, but it's like that's like that was like my first exposure to like you know like growing up like out out of the womb it was like Eminem and Biggie and stuff like that. But then like Adult Swim's like what the hell is this? Yeah, and I hear and I look him up MF Doom. Oh, that's his name. Like you know, he was one of those guys where like I knew so I, I can I, I knew so much of his music before I even knew his name. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's a good point you brought up. You you named like two really big mainstream guys like Eminem and Fifty Cent, and a lot of people within our generation. Those are like the first few rappers that you know, but what's interesting MVP about really yeah, what's interesting about MF Doom is that I've been seeing a lot of people you know on my timeline saying that MF Doom was their first uh, Fat Tony specifically. Um, he said that his MF Doom was like the first quote unquote underground rapper that he got into, and um, I think you know when I was playing like Tony Hawk's Underground, not Tony Hawk's Underground, like American Wasteland specifically, there was a there was a song by the Moment, and the Moment is a uh, underground production uh, collective and there was a song called put your quarter up and i've been obsessed with that song for years and it has a very good sample of the the jizza song uh, i got your back um trapped in a deadly video game trapped in a deadly video game yeah it samples that part you know when jizza says trapped in a deadly video game with just one man they sample that <laughs> yeah and mf doom had a verse on it and well it was mf doom aesop rock and slug and MF Doom's verse came on. It was just, it was very unorthodox. It was very strange. I didn't know what to make of it at first because I haven't heard anybody really rap like that. And then I hear his own stuff and it's even weirder. Like, I just thought, like, it's a comic book on wax. That's what I thought. I never heard anything like that before. Um, it was so strange and I just, well, I was fascinated by it. It was like listening to, like, a shoegaze album for the first time. Like, the first time you hear My Bloody Valentine. I had the same feeling listening to MF Doom. It's it's a sound that's so esoteric, but you can't look away. You can't stop listening to it. Um, yeah, and then I heard Mad Villainy, and my world ended. I was like, this is unfreaking believable. Like, this is a tag team for the ages, and 
on, and he's a producer in his own right. You know, I just I was listening to Operation Doomsday today, his first solo album, and he did majority of the production, and it's so so interesting. He takes he uses hip hop sampling, and he does it in such a creative way. You know, um, he did a lot of a lot of BDP samples that I thought were really interesting. Um, yeah. So, what else do you have to add for uh, Doom? I don't know, like I have a Doom. Like he, him, and like guys like him and Madeline, they always gave this energy like they were like a one man collective. You know, like they, like they, they were like so many. It's like their music sounded like there were so many people in like just like, it, but like in one man. Like I, I try to embody that with my music, if that makes sense. I always like, I, I like the way I try to embody that with my music and everything I do is like that. That comes from them. Like, you know, because they, you know, they kind of like in a way did it all themselves in a way. Hey, you mean like like on one song you'll hear like, you'll hear Mad Villain. No, you know, you hear Mad Lib. Then you'll hear Quasimodo. Yeah. Then you hear MF Doom. He created yeah. his own world. Like, yeah. they, they, it'll be like, you know, it's just the presence they give in their music. Like, they're a one-man collective. Like, yeah. I, I, that inspired me. Like, that's everything I am is Smiley Ariaga. Everything I, that I want to build. This comes from that. Yeah. Um. This sucks, losing MF Doom. But I'm so glad, like, he left us with an incredible album with uh, Zarface. Um, that that was unbelievable. Like, I love that album so much. And it's everything MF Doom is. And when you hear Zarface, you hear the same things. It's it's a comic book on wax, and that's exactly what uh, Doom was. And it was just it was just creativity in hip-hop. And his his flow is, is, is you know, it's for, it's for uh, an acquired taste. But he MF Doom touched so many people throughout uh, music and... You know, hearing him at first, it's like, this is not how a rapper sounds, you know, initially. Like, how you would... He doesn't sound like Jay-Z. Like, Jay-Z has this, like, you know, um, this certain finesse when he's, you know, rhyming. But MF Doom is just, like, it's totally out of whack and in the best way possible. But I'm going to miss MF Doom uh, severely. Any last words on Doom? Oh, yeah. Like, that crazy album they did with... Like, didn't they... They never worked with... They never worked with the Black Keys? MF Doom? Yeah. Not that yeah. I know of. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't know why. So, I know, Black Keys are big hip hop fans. <laughs> no, no, they made it out so. with Danger Mouse. Yeah. Yeah, with Danger Mouse. Okay, okay. Yep. Uh, cause you t- yeah, we, we were like looking up uh, the Black Keys albums that they did with Danger Mouse, and I thought, wait, did MF Doom ever work with them? I don't know. No, I, I know Black Keys are hip, big hip hop fans, so I'm sure they were Doom fans, so. Yeah. <laughs> so So we're going to talk about uh, the Black Keys, their seminal 2010 album, Brothers. And uh, before we, you know, dive into this, uh, I want to share some quick notable facts about this album that I thought were quite entertaining. So, Brothers was released May 18th, 2010. The album cover was designed by Michael Carney, the brother of drummer Patrick Carney. And the album cover actually won a Grammy, so Michael got himself a little Grammy for this. And this was, the Blackies were the last band to win a Grammy for Best Rock Performance by a Duo or Group with Vocals. Strange award what? title That's for right. Tighten it's Up. Oddly specific. This, yeah, so they won that award for Tighten Up, which is the only song that Danger Mouse produced on Brothers. But we'll talk about that. It won the Grammy for Best Alternative Music Album, whatever that means. Uh, <laughs> this was their commercial breakthrough, having their first Billboard Hot 100 song with Tighten Up. Um, like I said, it was the only song produced by Danger Mouse. Uh, Danger Mouse went on to produce uh, Attack and Release, which was before Brothers, 2008. El Camino in 2011 and Turn Blue in 2014. And every morning before their session for Brothers, they'd have breakfast at their local Cracker Barrel. So, Smiley, what are your thoughts on the Brothers' creative direction here? Because this album was very radio-ready. It was very commercial-friendly. So what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts, like, being very commercial, I don't know, I, I didn't really think it was uh, as commercial as uh, probably their, like, El Camino, like, uh, like, would you say, I mean, nah, I, 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 yeah, like, of all the things I, I thought of this album, like, commercial, is, is, like, I never, like, was it, it wasn't the first thing that popped in my head, like, uh, uh well, okay, like, uh, <laughs> Brothers and El Camino, th- these are songs that are very uh, radio-friendly, they're very commercial sound. Like the first, listen to the first three or four albums. Like it's so raw and gross and gritty. The, it, the Brothers is very glossy and clean, and I, it's not a criticism at all. But definitely more like the beauty side. Like a brother, because like 
with the intro especially like everlasting yeah, everlasting light. light oh my god that's a radio hit if i haven't heard one. Oh uh, yeah okay okay yeah yeah you got me in and there. for like, years i remember for about two or three or four years everlasting light was got really regular radio play like i've heard it on the radio all the time um tighten up especially howling for you like those are big radio records you know? Like Everlasting Lights, one of those songs is like, uh, like the, the intro, like it, it, that's like one of the best intros to an album I've ever, like probably one of my favorite intros to any album. Like it, it like leaves me in like a pool of tears, and uh, and then like and then I realize, wait, there's a whole another album after this song. It's like yeah. so powerful. It, it, like it, that's everything I love in an album intro. Like seeing that live was, was like damn. I I, I wasn't ready for the friend to play that live. <laughs> yeah, like, and. I think that you know, regarding their, you know, their their commercial ready, commercial friendly sound, and the more catchy and smooth and sleeker production, glossier production. Th- their first three or four albums, yeah, they had the, you know, you could tell. Okay, they're influenced by the past, and they loved artists like Arnold Bernsly, Junior Kimbrough, um, and they love they love the Stooges and, and stuff like that, uh, the Kinks. I think right around like Rubber Factory, that's when like that kind of raw throwback sound to me it started to like run run a little bit redundant after like a while. Like they did that. Nah. Yeah, like if they did one more album that I mean, Magic Potion was like their la- one of their last like raw ish sounding. Uh, well, Rubber Factory I'd say was the the last of like their raw ish sounding um, throwback ish bluesy garage sound before they started to like. Get they, they they went a little bit more of a psychedelic route with Magic Potion, but I think that raw sound I think it was starting to run its course at that point. So I think the Black Keys and again they they're two people, so you, it, it's very easy to sound like to to get redundant when you're just two people. You know what I mean? So they really had to like re change up their their sound a little bit. Not not totally change it, but like add a few things to it. Now, I think that, you know, with Magic Potion Beyond, especially on Brothers, there's a lot more instrumentation going on. There, there's some, even on Attack and Release, there's some organs in there. there there's a lot more bass. Um, there's a lot a lot more things going on. And a lot of their song structures are not the same. Like, there's a lot more, like, bluesy, riff-heavy songs. And, and there's a lot of tender, ballad-esque tunes, especially on Brothers. Like this is definitely like their least rough album. Like you know, like when you said before, like oh, like about the being commercial. Like something, in, something in my brain wanted me, to, like wanted to say, like oh no, the, no, it's not. And then I think about it, like yeah, no, no, it is, and that's not a bad thing. It's like it really is like their most, like their most gorgeous to me. Like brothers, is, like has always been. Like, it's that one platinum gorgeous. and one Grammy. Yeah, exactly. It's a yeah. commercial well, I album. Thought about that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's no, not. It's not, not a, a bad criticism. Thing. No. Exactly. It's a great thing. Like it's great for a band like that. But like, uh, like brothers is like to me like their most like. They're most like beautiful. They're most like, uh, like, like, it, like in terms of, like instrumentation. Like they're, they're most like beautiful album. It's like it's like the al- It's the album they have that instantly like brings like tears to my eyes. Like, like you, you usually like all their other albums are more like you know, like pure like this like rock and roll and shit. Like I'm like head banging, but like this is like what wh- I'm like wow. Like 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 Brothers is like the album like the first time I heard about them made me like sit down. I'm, like damn. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this was a very very pretty album. So. This was, even though Brothers was not fully produced by Danger Mouse, uh, we had one song, as we said, Tighten Up. This was part of the Danger Mouse produced era. Attack and Release was the first Danger Mouse pro- uh, produced album. Right, all the way up until Turn Blue was the last one. So what are your thoughts on the the Danger Mouse era versus like the original record this on a busted tape machine in, in a basement in Ohio era of the Black Keys? Well, like, uh, when I, I mean, when I was younger, I thought that El Camino, like, like, turned, like, the, the Danger Mouse produced projects, like, uh, especially El Camino, like, uh, cause at that point, like, when I first got into them, like, I, I wasn't familiar with Attack and Release as I am now, but, like, uh, El Camino probably was, like, my least favorite, but, like, I always loved, like, my favorite Black Keys stuff has always been, like, the basement stuff, so, like, you know, like, Thick Freakness is just, like, the most like they're like not like I was like dirty but like you know most like pure like, heavy rock and roll like album to me like I, I always preferred thick Fr- like thick freakness I always preferred that stuff like in terms of black keys but like attack and release is like is is awesome 
it, 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 it's kind of a mix of that too. It's, it's kind of like a mix of both worlds to me with the when it comes to the Black Keys. Like, and I, I can say that with El Camino too. Because like El Camino, yes, is like more. I guess uh, like it's more commercial, but it still has that like that grit that like the Black Keys always has. Like if, if that like if that makes sense. Yeah, like for me, I I love the Danger Mouse era because one, uh, Danger Mouse has a very good track record. You know, with uh, Norris Barkley. Uh, Danger Doom with MF Doom. Um, I, I love his bootleg, uh, the the Grey album that he did when he mixed um, the Beatles' White album with Jay Z's Black album. <laughs> He's God. a very creative guy. That was a trip and a half. Yeah, yeah. I and didn't believe it when I first heard. He like, did a lot of good real. stuff for the Black Keys, especially uh, uh, Attack and Release. To me, was a great um, change of pace for the Black Keys because, again, like I said before, they added a lot more insp- instrumentation. They put a lot more recipes into their gumbo. And it wasn't, to me, it wasn't just revivalism. They had, like, not like, they didn't have too many cooks in the kitchen, but they had, like, a new cook in the kitchen. You know? Yeah, they had a lot. They, they added to their recipe. Yes. Yeah. And especially, I love the album opener, um, All You Ever Wanted. Yeah. There's just fantastic um, organ section in the middle, right around, like, the two minute 30 mark. That's just stellar. It is unbelievable. And to me, it got the Black Keys out of that 60s revivalism sound, which I, I, I don't hate. I like it. But they needed to change up their, you know, change something up. So Attack and Release to me is their, you know, the beginning to, to start anew. But my my favorite of the, the Danger Mouse era is, it has to be, it's El Camino. It is one of their best sounding albums to me, um, and it's their mo- one of the most consistent albums. Like it just doesn't stop. Like it's just banger, banger, bang. Lo- starts off great with Lonely Boy, goes right into then there's uh, Gold on the Ceiling, and then there's um, Little Black Submarines, and then there's Stop Stop. There's Nova Baby. It, it ends strong too. Um, it's just a beautiful beautiful album the first time i heard yeah. uh any uh eddie blackie song was uh not a song off el camino uh like like uh, i heard it in my dance class <laughs> like <laughs> we, it, was, it was it was like i was in performing arts in in high school and like uh, i took ballet and that was one of the first that was the first major dance we did to the blackies i'm like who, who, who the hell are these guys and like when i started that's in high school that's when i started looking into them yeah, so I heard about the. I first heard the Black Keys in a, in my in my in my dance class in high school. So going back to Brothers, what are some bright spots and low spots on this album to you? Brothers, yeah. Oh man, like Brothers. Well, to me, Brothers, like the the intro is just like, wow. Like uh, I guess like probably like the most like 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 emotional is like towards like I, I guess like towards the beginning of the album, like um, probably like towards the like I I I, I guess like probably like uh. I don't know, it's hard to me to pick low spots in a Black Keys album. Like, they're not spots that I guess, like, not, like, low, but I guess, uh, not the most uh, memorable, I guess. Like, I, I, I never had any low spots on a Black Keys album. I don't know, anything that made me want to skip a track, no. no like, 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 nothing like that. I think one of the bright spots on this is definitely, uh, I concur with Everlasting Light. I love the, I think it's a fantastic introduction. Uh, they're, they're really good, especially th- this era. Well... Majority of their uh, albums have fantastic openers. Um, a thick Freakness with the Thick Freakness. Um, uh, the Everlasting Light. And then there's All You Ever Wanted, Lonely Boy. Um, great, great um, openers. And Everlasting Light has this... I think Darren Airback has like a beautiful falsetto throughout this um, entire track. There's this, uh, there's this stunning pulsating bass line that kind of overtakes... The track it's like the in the foreground which i like when when bass is in the foreground i i, I love that it almost feels like le- it's like it's like without it being a sub but like it's like it's like you're it's like you're levitating yeah it's almost. it's it, and it's very uh minimalistic and it's just the right amount of stuff to make it's a sweet simple song and um has a lot of beautiful um arranging uh, i think there's a there's a little uh there's like a, a sweet soft um Organ line on the bot, like the buried in the mix a little bit. I, I I believe so. 
and it kind of goes into this the song kind of has like a, a nice light crescendo towards the end i think it's absolutely yeah, gorgeous like, you know, like, yeah, yeah. The, like when i talk about levitation that's what like it feels like the song ends and you're just like and it, yeah when it, yeah. When, it, when, it, when it finishes it kind of um it kind of just kind of it, it, yeah it's like you're in the dark and then it ends in the light like I, I guess one of the reasons why that song like means a lot to me is that like uh, just like the name of it and like uh, how he's like and then how it sounds it's like it, it, you talk like you know I, I mean I can say I, I'm lucky enough to say this about my siblings my brothers they are my you know like not, not everybody I know has like gets along with their siblings all the time but like I can say that my family my brothers are my everlasting light like I hear that like especially going to see that live with you is just like wow. It was like a whole. It, it made it gave a whole another meaning to the song. Yeah. So it's a beautiful song. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then there is. Uh, there really. So I, I guess if you talk about not a low point, but like there really is no other. Like uh, there wasn't another track, I guess on like uh, for the rest of the album that like matched that like, like th- that emotional feeling. But but the rest of it I did like adore. Yeah, mo- like this <laughs> album is pretty damn. A lot of the songs are pretty goddamn memorable. You know, but there's not anything that I would really take off, really. And and, and to be honest, it sounds like silly. Black Keys, most of the Black Keys, a lot like Black Keys, one of those bands like their albums. Like uh, I kind of like, I don't, I, I play them all like in whole, like non play. I'll just okay. have them on. I'll just like just. It's like I remember like every part, but like maybe I can't remember every song name. So like that, you know, doesn't sound like ridiculous. But yeah, because the Black Keys, I I can't like. <laughs> Every time I, I want, I hear one. I want to hear the rest. You know what I mean? So yeah, I really liked um, "She's Long Gone." I think uh, that that's one of my favorites on this thing. There's a beautiful solo. Um, it's it's beautifully bluesy, if that makes any sense. And there's a lot of like there's a lot of heartbreaking lyrics on here that I think are just very vivid. Um, that I think it's 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 just like whoa, wow. This is okay. I feel it. I feel the, what you're feeling, bro. The song uh, "Next Girl." Uh, yeah, that's a good one. That's <laughs> I a like good that. One. I, I, the song. I, the reason why it's so memorable to me is like this: the feeling of it. it's like what he's saying. It kind of contradicts like the feeling of the song. He's saying, "Oh man, my next girl won't be like my ex girl." It's kind of like, but really, when you feel the song, it's like, "Ah, oh, I'm sad about my ex girl." You know, like, "Oh, but I'll get a better one." You know, that's what everyone says every time they. Get out of a relationship. I won't fuck up next time. Yeah, but, you know, but the song, but the way the song sounds, is, it, it's like, you know, someone's like driving, like, you know, like the press and stuff, blasting the song, like, uh, like, you know, but like, it, it, it's so much imagery with Black Keys albums. Like, uh, like, you know, like, man, I, I, I can go, like, it, it's, it's album, this album almost spiritual to me. Like, you know what I mean? A little bit. <laughs> I can recall feelings more than like actual, like, uh. Like parts, <laughs> and I think yeah. During the the sessions of this, uh, Patrick Carney was uh, going through a divorce, and he was in, in in kind of a rut. And when he heard "Next Girl," it kind of it helped him to get out of his funk. Um, and I think this album has a fantastic instrumental that I, I play all the time. Uh, "Black Mud," oh my god. Man, it is so it's it's everything like the the newer Black Key sound uh, is that I love so much. There's a lot of different instrumentation going on. There's a beautiful organ kind of skating along, and then there's this raw, uh, bombastic, uh, bluesy guitar riff that just kind of you know it, it just jackhammers through the the tune. It's just unbelievable. I love it. You have to it's. You know, like unbelievable. W- one of the reasons, like uh, Dan Arbeck's side project, uh, Yours Dreamly. One of the reasons why, like, I I love that out al- that the album hit me so much is that I haven't like that's like that's like the only other album that's like one of the albums that Dan Arbeck has done that that musical like that mu- that you know that musicality I didn't get that I didn't get that much musicality from like a Dan Arbeck project since Brothers Brothers was like to me like such like. In terms of musicality, like, uh, it, 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 I hold that in such high regard. I didn't get, like, you know, I didn't get that feeling, like, the, 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 that emotional feeling uh, until I heard Yours Dreamly. Uh, you know, like, everything I love about Yours Dreamly, it kind of, like, uh, like, comes from, it's, like, inspired from Brothers. Yeah, and you know what's also interesting about uh, this project is they've been a band, at this point, they've been a band almost 10 years. And... 
this was their first breakthrough through the mainstream. Think about it, being a band for 10 years and then then you become stars when you're a decade in. That's so crazy, right? That's unbelievable. They spent years before this album touring and touring and people think, think they, people think they're going to get that kind of started to drop. People think they're going to get that kind of success off their first album. But these guys yeah, got it did. 10 years in, 10 like years oh. in. Uh, and some of their earlier work was in movies and stuff like that. They would license their stuff off, but this was their first like we got a Grammy and we got uh, radio play and we're getting and we're platinum. So yeah, I mean I'm so happy for these guys and it's it's interesting because these this band is like when a band usually you know an artist goes quote unquote mainstream, um, they kind of just hmm, they get lost in their celebrity. They, they lose what made them them and they just kind of acquiesce to um, whatever's happening. And th- you know what's interesting? When you listen to a lot of um, the Black Keys, uh, more mainstream radio ready stuff, there's a lot of artists that, you know, that popped into the regular rotation of like, you know, alternative stations. And a lot of them sound like different versions of songs that came off of Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> the song structure sounds like that, but like an even terrible version of that. Ugh. And it's just like, dude. It's, wow. It's, oh my God. It's I, unbelievable. I was know? so nervous uh, when you asked me to talk about this album. Because like I said, this album is more like, is more like spiritual. Like, it, it's like, it's so like, <laughs> like, uh, it's hard to talk and not talk about it without like uh, feeling vibrations. It's, uh, man, like when you told me it was going to get remastered. I, 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 you haven't got the remastered version of them now yet? Nope, not yet. Oh, man. Are you, are you getting it? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, we, uh, let, let me know how it sounds. Yeah, like, I want to get it. Oh, know, man. There's a few other things I want to get, but... um, I mean, I have El Camino. That's I've wanted that on vinyl for a long time, but I finally got around to getting a record player, and it sounds just like I'd hoped. It sounds... I mean, I remember when the album came out, and when it was on vinyl, there was a big-ass sticker on the record, and on the CD, too, that said, Play Loud. And <laughs> boy, they were right. Play that shit very loud. Brothers and El Kim, like it, it makes such fitting sense that like Dan Arbach and them like made music for movies because like <laughs> these they didn't albums, make music for movies. Like they they license their music to movies. These but, albums are like movies. They should be in more movies, I believe. Yeah. These albums are like El Camino is like a god like El Camino and Brothers. These albums are like films. Like they they, they, they like the cover. It, it makes sense that the cover for Brothers won an award because that. It looks like the cover of like a like a film. Yeah, it looks like a movie trailer. It's, it's very, it's very like it, it's very, it, it's very like simplistic. Yeah, like, especially like, uh, turn blue. Turn blue is the, the, what you call it? That's an acid trip. Spiral. Yeah, that's an acid trip. It's like I, I kind of get like a, oh my God. I get disoriented yeah, at the album cover. It's like, oh my, oh my God. God, wait, Danger Mouse produced that, right? A turn blue. Turn blue. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah, Jesus that was the last one he did. Christ. Yep. That was like, man. But anyway, if you haven't heard Brothers from the Black Keys, um, I definitely recommend listening to it. It's um, it's a gorgeous album. It'll make you feel really good inside. Two Brothers. Yeah. And if you're... It, it, you know it's a, it's a great album for? Driving around. Yeah. Black Keys make <laughs> great driving music, especially Brothers too. Um, if uh, Everlasting Light does not make you feel all ooey and gooey inside, then you probably don't have a soul. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, uh, you can hate it. I don't care if you hate it, but I'm just saying. I've never, I've never personally talked to anyone that hated the Blackies. I, I only know people who either love them or just... I don't listen to a lot of them. I've never heard anyone say, God! Oh, God, another Black... And I've, I've never heard anyone react that way to the Blackies. Yeah. I, I don't. I've, I've, heard, I've heard somebody I know that told me that, yeah, the Blackies make good music, but like if I want to hear the blues, I'll listen to it elsewhere. And that's totally fine. That's a I fair think Dan Arbeck might agree with you. That's a fair point. <laughs> I, think you would, I think you would agree with you on and that. And that's exactly why I like their newer stuff. Um, I like the, di- the change of direction of their newer stuff because they're moving out of just becoming a bluesy revivalist band and they're adding a lot more tricks to their to their sound that kind of breaks away from their earlier, you know, we like Junior Kimbrough stuff. And you know what? In the later albums, they stopped covering a lot of those artists. Like their first two albums are loaded with R.L. Burnside and Junior, Kim- Junior Kimbrough covers. They actually did a Junior Kimbrough covers uh EP uh, Chulahoma that is a must listen. I'm telling you right now, you have to listen to that. Unfreaking believable. But anyway, any last words on brothers? 
Oh my god. Uh, glad it wasn't a sequel. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so happy it wasn't a sequel because it's just it's just that good. Uh, like, man, I'm looking forward to the next Black E's album. <laughs> like, looking forward to what him and Den are back. Are, are, no, him and Patrick Carney are doing next. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I have a little, we had a little bit of the bubbly. Well, th- not me. But, well, yeah, um, I, I did, sorry. Well, l- last year they did Let's Rock, but t- 2019 feels like... Um, Wow, yeah, it, it feels like, like forever that ago. That feels like it came out so much longer ago. It did, yeah. <laughs> like, when, we, when we saw them at the Barclays, <laughs> that felt like 10 years ago. Oh my God, yeah. you see a music video where like they were in therapy? Yeah, it was great. Like, was that a shoot? That wasn't a shoot, right? They didn't actually have issues, right? No, no, it was, they, they, it was kayfabe, but they okay. did a great job with it. Because there was room, there was, no, I'm glad you brought that up because there were rumors that they were, uh, that they were, they were beefing. Yeah, exactly, they were, like, what the hell? Um, <laughs> yeah, they were going to break up or something like that. And they just kind of played off of that. And the Foo Fighters, the same thing. They 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 were rumors about them too. But um, I like how they handled that. They handled that very well uh, because they, in between um, Turn Blue and Let's Rock, Dan Auerbach did um, which the Arcs, and he did another solo album. And there was no discussion about the Black Keys. But to be fair, the Black Keys tore a whole lot off of Turn Blue. They toured almost two years straight on that album. So they deserved a break. I'm glad they took yeah, a break. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's why their relationship has gone on as long as they have, because they understand that, you know, they're people. Yeah, and Patrick <laughs> Carney got married and he had a kid. You know, they were just taking some taking a breather, and I'm glad they did. Smiley Underground. the ground. I'm Peter A. Big thanks to Smiley Ariaga for joining me Thank on this. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, no problem. Um, make sure you're subscribed to My Little Underground wherever you get podcasts. And... You can follow me on socials at MLU Pod. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. And rest in peace to MF Doom. Be safe, everyone. Mm-hmm.